It's Thursday night and we're here with Bulls manager Gary Freeman. Gary, first of all, congratulations on uh, promotion to the Combine County's Premier League. Is that a huge weight off your mind now? Um, I think it's been building for the last few months that it looks like we were going to get promotion. I think at the start of the season that was always our first goal, so nice to get it out of the way, but I think um, we've known for a while it's probably going to happen. Yeah. No, no, thank you all so much for, for coming along today. Um, obviously, I'm absolutely delighted to be appointed manager of Chelsea Bulls. It was a bit of shock, I didn't see it coming. It's a, obviously a fantastic club that's uh, going places. Um, and, you know, as I say, history is overrated. And, you know, this has got a massive, massive fan base. Great people behind it. You know, I was absolutely shocked when I got a phone call from Ian the other, um, the other day. He's like, Chris, can you come along? Have a wee chat with us. So I jumped on a plane straight over to, to Jersey and uh, met him, met Ross. And, you know, I was a bit shocked because Gary, he was doing an all right job, I think. Um, yeah, undefeated. And, you know, hopefully I'll, yeah, I'll not be able to, to, to make that continue. But, yeah, it's a great opportunity for, for a young manager like myself. I'm not that young. Can we edit that out? Any chance? Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, so straight here, obviously back to about 2012, by the looks of the, the seats. Um, just don't like the seats the way they are, but I don't like the white seats. Can we get them changed back to these red ones? Is there any, any room in the budget to get the red seats? I, I don't like these. We'll talk about it later. Um, yeah, so absolutely delighted. My football and philosophy, yeah, I, I'm a great believer. If the other team scores, you've got to score one more than them to win the game. It's... It's vital, you know. I want 110% from the lads. The language barrier. I, I, I speak English. Good game, good performance. So another win, just keep going. Oh, it's the normal. Uh, up all cereal, uh, banana, uh, and that's me ready to rock like everything ready in the bag. To get off two goals in the first 10 minutes was good. But at the same time, it was probably... That probably hindered us for the rest of the first half. Ah, oh, stroke of luck, and to be honest, I had a dry patch, you know, scored two and two, and two so, well, not two and two, but, yeah. yeah. Hi everyone, Chris here from Heat the Ball Gaming, and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. I know I flatter to deceive and promise this and tease this for months and months, and I've just never got round to it, so here we are, playing for the Jersey, Jersey Bulls, Britain's newest and most summary club and we are an absolute delight obviously if you haven't seen the first episode of this go and check it out straight away because uh, the club were super welcoming to me brought me in met players met the management met directors met people from Epsom and Ewell as well so it was a fantastic trip so yeah check that out before you dive into this series so today we're going to meet the players have a look at the club um, and just have a look at everything that we've done and it was a bit hard a learning curve for me I had to put in strips and and stuff so as you can see that's the home strip and it does match the home strip I made that myself this one here was on the Jersey Bulls website I managed to make it fit in the away strip so it is actually over home and away strips that Jersey Bulls will wear right, so founded in 2018 they didn't play their first competitive game to 2019 so they are the only a sort of club on Jersey that's in the professional league. Jersey has its own league system and the teams all play each other. It's quite a competitive league. So here we go. I'm the manager, captains James Query and um, Jules Gabardini's the vice captain. We'll have a look at the players in a minute, but I'm just going to go through all these pages just so you can see them. Uh, obviously, Nations in England. And they've got no rivalries. Or, or, I should have maybe put in uh, Guernsey as the as the rivalry, but I, I never got round to it. Facilities, seven thousand seater. It's not seat, seven thousand seater stadium. It's nine thousand nine hundred and ninety two seated. I think it's actually a bit smaller than that, but the game can change things on you. Um, it is uh, synthetic, so it's an astroturf. So it'll be interesting to see how we get on with that. Basic youth facility, fairly basic youth academy. So we're going to be wanting to improve that as the save goes on. Uh, I don't think we've got any affiliates. And then history, there's no history because, you know, history is overrated, as they say. 
we're going to make our own history and we already have made our own history. We've got quite a lot of staff for the size of the club, obviously the club's pretty professionally run for the size of it, obviously the players and everything are all amateurs, all these people are volunteers but you know, it is a fairly professional outfit so got Russell Lefever who is actually the chairman, he's the man I'm going to have to impress. We've got Ian Horswell who is um, the commercial director, he's been absolutely fantastic with me the whole time, um, all the communication I've been had with him, I've met him, went over, watched the game with him and everything, absolutely fantastic. Peter Hall, the other director, and Laura Donny, who's the other director. Gary Freeman, I was a little bit disappointed, not disappointed, but I took, I took this man's job, so I thought I'd give him a job as a director of football. He's not great, but I've just let the game kind of decide where the, the level of the team. I didn't want to cheat and just put players really, really good, so I just kind of let everybody find their own level. Assistant manager's Kelvin Nielsen, who is the assistant manager in real life. We've got Jason Carpenter, who is the goalkeeping coach. We've got Joe Parkinson, who's the fitness coach. And we've got Jim Robertson, who's the head physio. We've got Kit Chamber, who's the head of sports science. And we've got Richard Worthington, who's the chief scout. So I think we need to get some more scouts in because, as you can see, and I'm not cheating, I don't want people saying I'm cheating, this is actually the finances. I've given half a million pound because it costs about £250,000 to be flying backwards and forwards from Jersey. So this will give a good starting point. Obviously, I'll not be able to spend that and stuff, but it's not like any other, it wasn't like the Tasmania Berlin one I did last year where the club didn't have any money and had to build it up. This, this club does have funding behind it. It does have commercial enterprises behind it. It's, it's in Jersey. Jersey's a well-off place. So we have gave it, made it realistic. We've given them two years running cost. And oh, as you can see, I'm not getting to spend that. I've got £3,000 wage budget. So, you know, it's not going to help me in the long run. It's just going to stop the club from going bankrupt anytime soon. It will go bankrupt eventually because... War League clubs always do, but, you know, I gave them two years um, running course. So the, the club vision, they want me to work within a, the wage budget, which is fairly easy to do in this level, where all the clubs, all the players are going to be amateurs or, or part-time. So they want me to win the competition and then win the next one and win the next one. But looking at the squad and looking at the other teams in the league, we should be fairly, fairly straightforward. Right, so the squad, this is the bit you were all wanting to see, and it's a fairly big squad. Um, as you can see from the five goalkeepers in the squad, <laughs> a lot of players, I'm going to have to go through these guys, and unfortunately some of these are not going to make the cut, unfortunately, if that's <laughs> I feel really bad saying that. Um, but if we're sorting by ability, Zeko Martovic is the best player, um, followed by Jack Boyle. Michael Martins is the third best, even though he's not the number one choice goalkeeper. James Query, who's the captain, he's going to be absolutely fantastic. He says his best position is central midfield, but he's a, a defender, definitely where he starts. Um, and then, unfortunately, some of you guys are going to be down here. Um, Luke Campbell, he's really good. Why is he down there? Tackle on a 14 and everything, I, I do not know. So goalkeepers, I think the goalkeepers will take longer than anybody else. Robbie Scott, a young lad, young Scottish lad. He's going to get a chance just by nepotism, because <laughs> he's Scottish. So he's pretty good, isn't he? He's got all the stuff you want from a young goalkeeper. Oh, definitely at this level. I've got a funny feeling when the transfer window opens, when the... Uh, in the summer, in the, in the summer, in the winter, then a lot of these players will get nicked. Dan Burrow again, he's really good. I don't know why he's only got one star current ability. And we've got Ewan Van Der Velen, who is the number one choice goalkeeper. And again, he's really good. I don't know why it's saying two stars. Um, we'll have to have a quick look at when we get to 
Michael Martin, Bradley Rowland, he's another goalkeeper, really good. Again, any of these guys could be my number one choice goalkeeper. And then, I don't know why Michael Martins has come out so good. Yeah, he's yeah, very good as well. Yeah, it's not much to choose between them. I don't know where they're getting their ratings from. But I couldn't find a picture of Michael Martins. So if you've got a picture of Michael Martins, I, I sound really dodgy. I'd be looking all over the place for pictures of Chelsea Bulls footballers. You know, Facebook stalking them, Twitter stalking them, trying to find a decent headshot. And so, as you can see, some of them have, have done better than others. Right, like Sean Lambert. He's a defender, a right back, and as you can see, the only picture I could find to Sean Lambert was a black and white one. These, these pictures might not actually be the footballers, they might just be actually some random person that's got the same name as them. And then Mark Anthony Logue, who I briefly said hello to when I was in Jersey, he um, he's a really good, really good player. And he really impressed me when I was over in Jersey, he's just a big, solid defender. Sort of, sort of a guy you want in the trenches. As I say, when I was over in Jersey, Jersey, Paris is a Jersey, we're playing a, a friendly game, so most of these guys were away. Uh, Harry Curtis, another right back, really solid. He's not one and a half stars, he's, he is solid. Um, we're all actually pretty solid. Luke Campbell, again, he is, he's missing some bits, but Positioning, tackling, heading. He's got the he's got the holy trinity. A bit lacking in pace. That's probably why he's getting such a poor rating. But he'll definitely play football. He's not surplus to requirements like that. Says um, sometimes the ratings and football manager are just not that good. They don't know a good player. Jack Griffin again, solid acceleration, pace. That's what you want at this level. Acceleration and pace. We've got Conor O'Shea, again, solid, solid centre-back, defensive midfielder, he'll get games as well, to be honest, the, the fitness levels at this level are going to be the, the main thing, like Jake Giles, who was absolutely phenomenal when I went over to see Jersey Bulls, it says surplus to requirements, assistant manager, mate, you, well, you don't know what you're talking about, just keep it to me, he is going to be the starting left back so I, I don't know where we're getting that from he's got potential Fraser Barlow who when I was over in Jersey wasn't playing and he's doing the classic Bulls pose brilliant um, all the kids and everything were going where's Fraser Barlow he wasn't playing he was away with Jersey where's Fraser Barlow where's Fraser Barlow and he wasn't there so he's a he's a bit of a hero in Jersey so and then we've got Harry Cardwell, looking very smart there. <laughs> Again, I think, I think if it's just put anybody with two stars being surplus to requirements, these guys will all play football. Um, natural fitness of 20, that is, that is exactly what you want. Joe's Gabardini. And, yeah, he's, there's not much you can say about this, this level of football. We're all footballers, they can all kick a ball in the right direction, so they'll all get football so but yeah he's he's solid there's not a bad player in this squad to be honest Bradley Mercer again he's got great determination and he's 19 year old he he could develop and into a proper player because that's what you're looking for in a young player determination ideally if the work rate was a bit higher then we would definitely be looking at a player but pace acceleration yeah, he's, he could he could go somewhere. The great thing about these lower league saves is I could guess who the, the players that are going to manage to go up the leagues with us are, but um, you can't. Calvin Weir, he sounds like he should be Scottish. Um, two stars, where are they getting these ratings from? Because look at that, acceleration, agility, pace, stamina. He's the total package. Like, let's, let's not look at the physicals too much, but he can dribble. Determination, work rate, he's a he's a star man at this level. So I, I don't know where the coaches are getting their star ratings from. All it needs sometimes is for one player to be so much better than everyone else and it just knocks the, the star ratings right off. 
Jake Baker. Again, he's, he looks like a talisman, lacking in the pace and acceleration parts, but as I say, it's uh, it's almost completely random how, how we managed to get these guys to do it. If you want to download this database, I've got the, the link below on the Twitter page. Um, FM Editor 85 makes it, does an absolutely fantastic job. Jason Mendy DeAndre, again, really good player. Um, pace, acceleration, he's going to absolutely tear it up in this division, determination a, quite a determined squad actually, I'm, I'm quite pleased it's one of, one of the key elements I love um, <laughs> he's getting tired yet of me going through the squad, and this, and this is me doing it quickly, Carl Hines <laughs> an attacking midfielder he should be a striker. I don't know. I changed it twice, and he's went back to being an attacking midfielder. But he is a star. He can play up front. He can he could do anything. Actually, look at me. He's got some really really good um, stats, mental stats, physical stats. You're not really bothered about technical stats at this level. Um, and then Johnny Lee. Quisney, that, that is quite French, isn't it? <laughs> he, he sounds French. Anyway, well, he's only a couple of miles away from France. Um, he's kind of looking off in the distance here. He's quite looking quite thoughtful there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, again, really solid. Luke Shirley, <laughs> very good player again. Acceleration, pace, decision-making's good. Lacking a little bit in other areas, but... He's 18 year old, he could develop, he says one star more. I think he could probably do a bit better than that. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him, maybe get him out of loan. Adam Trotter, good passer of the ball, good decision making, work great. So he's a midfield playmaker by the looks of things at, at this level anyway. And then we've got Zelko Martinovic, who is one of the best players. And yeah, he's, he's pretty good acceleration pace. I'd like them to be a little bit higher just so we could... Uh, ah, he'd, he'd run them really ragged. So he, he looks good. He's going to be a, the star man. Cypriot. Ari looks happy as well. Jack Boyle. He's, he's another star player. Looks absolutely amazing, actually. <laughs> he's, I think he's a star man. Natural fitness at 19. Off the ball, decision making. He's, yeah, he's a total package. <laughs> Absolute total package. We've got Kieran Lister. He's a attacking midfielder, come striker, finishing. He looks like he could score a few goals at this level. <laughs> he's, yeah. Look at that dribbling, finishing. Yeah, he, he is a, the absolute definition of a of a striker. Like a, a proper poacher. He, he's going to get poached in the January transfer window. Saul Solomon. Another young Englishman. And he's got potential to go further. I think he could be up with us in the in the higher leagues. For looking at his stats. Kind of wish his determination was a little bit higher. But we could maybe work on that. Because we've got a lot of guys in the squad that are determined. Um, and then we're nearly at the end. George James Giffero. And he's a very good striker as well. We've got some decent strikers. He's finishing, lets him down a wee bit, but he's got dribbling, heading. He's got everything you possibly want. So he's a good, good option as a striker. And last but not least, Daryl Wilson. And again, he's a he's a target man. Heading a 13, pace, strength. Acceleration, so yeah. Hopefully, I've done you justice, and there might be a few players who I haven't. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Can't remember. Did I miss a couple of players? Did I miss out Ruben Mendes? Pisses. If I have, uh, went over him. He's another good player. Um, handsome devil as well. There we go. And finally, I don't think I went. Did Cameron Nafaka. And again, he's a solid midfield option. This this team's going to breeze this league. You know, I'm going to predict it now. You can write it down. Screenshot this. We're going to win promotion. I'm going to 
go undefeated just like Gary has. In terms of the division, we're in the Cherry Reds Combined Counties Division 1, which is mainly London, round about London area. Um, obviously Jersey Bulls are not in London area, but it's easier for them to fly in to London, play their games rather than playing sort of down Southampton, Bournemouth way, because we'd have to, to then fly in and then travel, so this is the easier way for them. Can even maybe get a lift from British Airways. Yeah, we've only got two, we are the favourites to go up, and there's only two players who aren't in the Dream Team 11 for this league. Fenlon. Ah, he's alright, isn't he? Jim Fenlon. And Beard. Sam Beard. There we go. There are the two players. He doesn't look that great, does he? He's, a, he's contracted to Dork, and I, I've got better in the squad. Right, so today's squad we're going to go for Vander Villet, Query, O'Shea, Griffin and Giles, and then Hines and Boyle in the midfield, Martinovic, Barlow and then Giffalo and Wilson are on the bench. We've got Roland, Logue, Baker, Leicester and Lambert, only five subs allowed. So let's see, Fraser Barlow is struggling. This will be interesting to see where we really are. We obviously won every friendly, so this is going to be really interesting how we get on. And let's talk over what we're going to say. We should be winning without a problem. Nobody, nobody's interested in what I have to say. A quick line up, just don't shake hands. <laughs> so here we are. I quite, quite like that strip that Kensington and Ealing are, are wearing. It's like green on green. It's quite funky. And there's Boyle, Barlow, my main man, Wilson. Oh, Giffero gets there to Martinick. A lot of ball players in this squad. <laughs> I don't know what I've done. <laughs> I'm going to say we all had a, our, our skinheads to... Uh, <laughs> just for team bonding. Wilson. And there we go, Daryl Wilson, his first goal of the season. Marcelko Bartowick with the assist. I think this this team's got two two teams that could win this league. Crossed over, Wilson. Oh, just what a goal. Meat and drink. And Harrison Craig. Let me know in the comments if, if you've I don't think the players are, are are too good because, like when I was when I was sorting it out, because the, the players are the, the the team is so far ahead in the league. So you know I've tried to make it as realistic. Van der Villet with a save. So yeah, I've tried to make it as realistic as I can. Um, as I say, the team is quite far ahead. As I say, we haven't lost a game all season, so they are, are so much better than the other teams in the league. We could probably go a positive, actually. Sitting here, defending. Well, not defending, but just being neutral. But if we need to push on, get another goal, and Boyle nearly scores. I can't tell. I can't tell what players want because there's so many baldies. <laughs> Barlow. To Wilson, and there's his second. Deadly. Absolutely deadly. You see, this, this is what Gary's, Gary Freeman's doing wrong. He should be playing get the ball to Daryl Wilson. What a goal. We're up to second position. Somebody must be routing somebody else. McNally to Spence. Oh, that was some shot. And yeah, it's been pretty much as I expected. Um, team talk. I'm very pleased to keep it going. 
and team talk we're all delighted you know not a weak tactics you don't need to think too much about them hit the ball and run and hope you have better players than the other team which I think we do Chapman to a sheet yes Van der Villet what a, what a good ball oh and Martinovic Oh, what a ball to Wilson. Can he get his hat trick? And oh, he's so close. Wilson's having a stormer. Who's struggling? Hayes are beating Diva Porto Galactica, which is an awesome name for a football club. And British Airways, and right, let's make a sub. We've got superior fitness. I don't know how long that will last because obviously we're not professional. So, uh, James Query, the captain, looks disinterested. I'm surprised at that. He is the most professional man in the squad. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mark Anthony Logan. And then, where are we going next? Gifferow's not done much. We'll get Kieran Le uh, Lester on. And we'll leave the final sub just to see normally you make your three subs and then somebody gets injured. McNally, Donovan, oh, and Van Villet with a save. That's why his jersey's number one. Doyle, we've came into the game in the second half. Just going to drop it back to balanced. And who's struggling? Baker's coming off for Boyle. And there we go. Jake Baker. Will she? And Lester over the top. And oh, that was a glorious chance. And Epsom Marie Will are losing to Ash United. Castle to Harrison and Hines. What a breaks up play fantastically. And Barlow. Oh, and so close. He was the man that actually scored Jersey Bulls' first ever goal. So it would have been quite nice for him to have scored the goal. Leicester. Oh, Chapman's going to take it away. And that's a routine win. Not fantastic, but it's been a routine win. A throw in. There's Jenkins to Harrison. And it's, it's meat and drink to our defenders. They can all head the ball. Fantastic. Here we go. 2 0. Darrell Wilson does the job. Team talk. Very pleased. That's all I'm going to say at the beginning because obviously the, the players have to support me. So that is fantastic. So what I'll do is we'll come back for in a couple of games time. I'll play a couple of games because it's a huge season. And we'll come back and we'll uh, show you the next game. So what are the games in the schedule? Fleet Spurs, British Airways, Dorkin. Yeah, we'll come somewhere about here. Toot and Beck, I want to cover that one. They're a very lovely club as well, Toot and Beck. So, definitely want to see them in action. And I've heard, I've kept this uh, database because I've heard that Toot and Beck might get a huge amount of money in about two seasons' time. And I quite want to keep an eye on them. And I want to make sure that um, we, we see that because... I think it's an obscene amount of money. It seems to be a error in the database. So this is why I kept this database rather than the next one. All right. So I will see you soon. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.